As is a Friday in October, we've got a lot of big things to talk about, but none bigger than the World Series. Holy moly, what a game. Sign me up for six more of those, please. Beautiful night in Globe Life Field. Roof closed tonight for this one. The Rangers, they got hot early. Up 1-0 already. There goes the ALCS MVP, Adelis Garcia. That bring, that's a double. That brings home another run. Rangers up 2-zip. Now we're in the fourth. How about Tommy Pham? See ya. That gives the D-backs a 4-3 lead. They end up going up 5-3. They wouldn't score another run. That held all the way until the bottom of the ninth, though. That's when Corey Seager goes bye-bye. Mammoth shot. Two runs. That sends it to extras. Then it's time for El Bombi one more time. Garcia does it again. He sends this one oppo, and it's over. Man, oh man, what a game. Let's get over to Chuck McIntyre. He had a front row seat for it all. Chuck, a couple of big sluggers, making a couple of big swings, putting this one over the top. What was it like in that building? Yeah, Matt, it was absolutely electric. I mean, you're talking about a tale of two ball games here tonight in Arlington. You had the first eight innings that Ranger fans were on pins and needles. And if there were any nerves whatsoever, it wasn't from the young guys early. Both Josh Young and Evan Carter, the two rookies for the Rangers, had four of the team's first five hits. But you said it. I mean, late in the ball game, when it mattered most, the money dudes stepped up. Corey Seager in the ninth had a first pitch fastball. That was a nuke job. And then, of course, Adalis Garcia. I'm running out of superlatives. I think everybody else is as to what kind of hot streak this guy is on. I mean, a few games ago, Matt, this dude gets drilled. He hit four home runs since. He got drilled again tonight, woke him up again, hits the walk-off job. Whatever anybody is trying to do to this man to either, A, get him off his plate or get him off his game, it ain't working. There are no more words. Like, we, we've all set him off. Um, it's just, wow, at this point, it's just, he comes up in that situation, you know, um, something big's about to happen, go grab your popcorn. I mean, just wow. He's, he's, Corey's just unbelievable. I mean, it just, year in, like, year in, year out from the very, very beginning of the season till now, he's the same guy and he competes his, he competes his butt off. He's, he's so much fun to watch. Don't try and be the hero, just, you know, do what the game calls for you and, uh, Everybody, you know, it's going around a lot right now. Um, there's a lot of stuff leads up to those big moments that people get done. Um, but, yeah, what a better person. That's awesome. Any game one win is huge. Um, but for us to do it like that, here at home, after, you know, we scuffled the three against Houston, I mean, just unbelievable. Yeah, indeed it is. And, Matt, I don't know if anybody watched Fox News at 9 earlier tonight when we talked to Mary and Jeff Young about their most favorite World Series moment, and what came to mind to both of them? The 88 Kirk Gibson walk-off homer in game one for the Dodgers against the A's. What happened here tonight in their son's first ball game, playing in a World Series? A walk-off homer to win game one of the World Series. First time it's happened since 1988. Some of this must be divine. We'll see what happens tomorrow in game two. Well, Chuck, if I'm remembering that correctly, I believe it was also to right field that Kirk Gibson hit. So. The World Series is continuing tomorrow night with Game 2 in Arlington. Then they have a travel day Sunday before three more in Arizona, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. If necessary, they'll get to that Game 5. Well, remember when I said there's a lot of big things to talk about? Well, how about we talk about the biggest person in San Antonio, the tallest anyway. Wemby and the Spurs back in action tonight against the Rockets. Wemby had 15 points in 23 minutes on Wednesday, but was in foul trouble for most of the night. Tonight, they get to him early. He started that one first bucket of the game. Pretty little fadeaway for him. Then later, running the break, Keldon Johnson tosses this one to Jeremy Shohan, but Wemby takes it from him, jams it home. Maybe if Jeremy was a little taller. All love, though. Devin Vassell, he had a huge opening night, and he didn't slow down tonight either. And one gets the three and the foul. The Spurs Rockets, they're tied up at 52 going to the break. Let's jump to the fourth quarter. Spurs on the break. Trey Jones to Wemby. The reverse jam on the rim run. What a pass from Trey Jones and the concentration from Victor. Getting that one in. Later in the fourth, Wemby, ISO, spin move, reverse jam. That's some nice defense by Jamari Smith Jr. too, but what a crazy move from Victor. Just about two minutes left in this one. Spurs down three. Wemby blocks the tomahawk jam, blocks it again. Smith Jr. just wondering, what does he have to do to get past this guy? It's phenomenal. Oh, my God. 
Now Spurs down two, 25 seconds left. Iso on the wing. Just muscles that one in. Tie game. That sends it to overtime. We want more basketball. First bucket of the OT, that right there. Let's see it again. Off the inbounds. Nice, easy little jumper for Wemby. Spurs lead. Ensuing possession for the Rockets. Trey Jones, he intercepts. They're off. Gets it to Keldon. Keldon with authority. He's mad at the rim. Wemby goes for a double-double. Vassell pours in 25. The Spurs, they get their first win of the season. Wow. Next up for Wemby and the Spurs, it's their first road trip of the season. They head west to face the Clippers and Kawhi Leonard. That's Sunday, right on NBA TV. Now, can you believe it's week 10 of the high school football season already? Only two weeks left to the playoffs. It's wild, I know. But with it being so late in the year, you know what kind of week it is. Oh, yeah. Steel Knights, Judson Rockets week. Huge game every year in this rivalry. Let's get things started in the first quarter. I almost said inning. I'm all baseball focused right now. Knights already up 3-0. Something is said. Shad Warner and Jalen Cooper for six. We've said that a lot this year. One of the best duos in the state. Steel goes up 10. Steel now up 17-0, but Elijah Favela to DeMorland McGarity. And he's gone. Dude's got some speed. That made it a 10-point game, but Warner again. This time, doing it with his legs. He's in for six. Steel up 24-7 at half. They go on to win 52-14. They move to 8-1 on the year. Let's get to some scores now. East Central beats Clemens 28-18 in a little bit of an upset. Churchill beats Marshall 42-21, trying to keep pace in that division. The Johnson Jaguars taking on the volunteers from the Legacy of Educational Excellence. First quarter, Ty Hawkins puts up the fade. Watch this from King Johnson. The refs are going to get together on this one. Not sure what for, but because he didn't just get one foot in, he got two feet in. Jags go up seven zip. Later in the quarter, almost the exact same thing. Hawkins fakes the run, gives that to King. A little bit more space this time. His second TD grab of the game. Johnson rolls lead tonight. They win 57-3. to three. The Number one team in our area, the Reagan Rattlers, are continuing on their quest for an undefeated season tonight, taking on the Roosevelt Rough Riders. Rattlers up just seven at halftime because of things like this. Brennan Carroll rips off the big run down the sideline before the drive stalled out for the Rough Riders, but late in the third, it's Rattler time. They get that to the house. Cole Pryor, he makes it a two-score game. Then in the fourth, Pryor again. He widens it for his second TD of the second half from short range. Rattlers pull away in this one. They remain undefeated. Some more scores now. Bernie Champion, they win 35-23 to over Kyle Lehman. Buda Hayes, 10-10 to Smithson Valley, 47. Smithson Valley got the inside track to win that district. And New Braunfels beats San Marcos, 45 to 14. Coming up, we got some more high school football highlights from teams like John Jay and Burbank. Plus, UTSA athletic programs get let down by their own fans. I'll tell you what that means after the break. This is the Thomas J. Henry Sports Dance. This is the Thomas J. Henry Sports Dance. John Jay Mustangs having probably their best year in nearly two decades. They lost their first game of the season last week, now looking to rebound against the Taft Raiders. Raiders' first possession, rolling the dice a couple of times on fourth down. First, Johnny Lott puts that one up to Matthew Stevenson, spelled with one T for a big chunk play. Then a little bit later, Lott finishes it off with a one-yard sneak. The Mustangs now facing a third and long on their first drive as Jackson Gutierrez takes a shot to Diego Quiroz. He's there. That's the two San Antonio Sports All-Stars for the John Jay Mustangs, hooking up for a 64-yard game-tying touchdown. Jay rebounds. They win this one by a touchdown tonight. The Burbank Bulldogs taking on the Edison Golden Bears tonight over at the Rock Pile. Check this out. Opening kickoff is a Bulldog onside kick. They recover it. How about that for coming off hot? And then senior Johnny Alvarado catches that kick in a few plays later. Listed as a DB, looks like an RB, sounds good to me, I guess. Second later, fourth down for the Bulldogs. Kevin Hernandez sends it to Leo Lozano. Somehow comes down with that one in triple coverage. That's a touchdown, Bulldogs. They get to 8-1 and one on the season. A loaded slate for Saturday as well for us here in the area. Canyon looks to keep their strong season going against MacArthur. Brennan takes on Holmes over at Gus. 
O'Connor faces Sotomayor at Ferris, and Alamo Heights looks to stay undefeated against Lanier. All of those 2 p.m. kickoffs. On to the college side. Well, UTSA heavily favored against East Carolina this weekend on the field, but off the field, they got dealt a blow by their own student body. Athletic Director Lisa Campos announced today that UTSA students voted overwhelmingly against a proposed increase in athletic fees. The modest, gradual increase would have upped the school's athletic budget by $5 million per year by 2027-2028. In a statement, Campos said, obviously we're disappointed because this was so important to the university and to the athletics program and really the 35,000 plus students that attend UTSA. I don't believe this was a vote against athletics. No rest for the weary though for the Roadrunners. They're back at home in the dome kicking off against East Carolina tomorrow at 2.30. Man, what a day for sports in Texas. Overtimes, extra innings. We got so much going on. We're gonna have even more going on tomorrow with game two of the World Series. Join us right back here on Fox after the game.